its own monster. Yes, it does. So, yes. Yeah. So that's great. Oh, this is mine. I've had a little bit of a setback with my knee. I guess. Oh. <laughs> I, I guess I did we wrong. put together that flow chart for? Did we have yeah. those printed? Do we have the copies? No, those. These are my. No, can you yeah. it's doing it again. Good. Thanks a lot. I know she got me. Oh, that's it, a PDA. Absolutely. <laughs> That our, were sent. Our trees, our trees weren't approved yet. As I was saying. Uh, yeah, I don't see some five on here. Huh? I don't see some five in here. <laughs> so it'll be up on the G. It'll be up on the screen. Oh, What's so that? The Don, agenda? Some five will be up there. It'll be up. It's going to be up on the screen. I'm going to approve though. I don't think so. <laughs> well, Going on the walks and stuff. I think I could get a follow, but it's much better because. Oh, so, so well, you hear what Christine said? No. And he wanted to follow up there. And I think we approved. He's saying it hasn't been approved yet, but that's what we're doing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. When I sent it back to you, just to make sure everything had been noted on it, and now talking about that earlier, huh? And then yeah, it's really expansion of the committee of which you've already approved. And then I guess we're going to bundle the whole squad from each zone with one vote up. So that's uh, formal to the board. The good news is we don't have a big one. We just have a few. We have a we have a small one too. Because finance meetings of course are coming. And I know I want to be in the next two meetings of the state. So, what are you doing? Um, the two came out and back is So, what are what is the name of the tree that's back in 108? And we're going to, every piece tree has covered so much space, numbers. And um, I had a little bit set back. I guess I did that. I because I woke up shadow because it's a leak. Is it leak? Was asleep, you know. Oh. So I'm just going to support, support it and until it says right. it's okay. supported by the tennis court. Yeah. Hoping it says oh, no. Okay. She's yeah. talking about the tennis court. Yeah, no yeah. way. But could be worse. Where is your name? Oh, there's a tree here. Yeah, she, she 108 is right here. I don't know. Yeah. I'll figure it out. Uh, she well, pulls it and yes. it's in all the space. The corridor is really poor mm -hmm. because of the shadow of the shade of that. Well, there's a uh, lot of big old trees in there. There's one big one. Mm -hmm. okay. So, Jolene's here. Kind of oh, so there's a front door. Mm -hmm. And so you're gonna yeah. yeah, we talk about it. They're gonna talk about it here. Oh, okay. but it's a leap. So, what is the name of that tree? That big tree that covers that provides so much shade. Oscar, that... Oscar thinks it's a liquid amber. It is a liquid amber. You think it's a what? Liquid amber. A liquid amber. I thought you said tulip. No, it's a liquid. No, oh, we got no. I still don't know. That's why you see all those bolts in there, all the seat butts. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So Italian, you know, they throw back, but I don't, I don't know. know. Lots of people it's say it's always a tricky area. Yeah. 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 I can see the stretch of the dog. Yeah. 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 If I see yeah. it, I'll just go Oh, it's Wait a minute. Okay. Wait a minute. Okay. Well, that's Kathy Wong. Which one? In the green. That's Kathy's one, right? Yep. Okay. Is this on? Have a great meeting, everyone. Okay, thank you. Is this on? Three o'clock. Oh, Let's go do this. The time favorite. Just got me. Oh, Which one? The one you went to see the eclipse. Oh, it was a great. Yeah, I was thinking about you the whole time. I was like, how she is she she's she's looking at it. Yes. The only mistake I made no idea I was making. Okay. No, it's not me. It's uh three o'clock shot time. So we're gonna go ahead and start, but before we do, we would extend uh an informational note to those of us who are trying to participate by Zoom. This is going to be a podcast without the camera. Hopefully there's going to be um, an audio. Hopefully you do hear me. And there are going to be exhibits that you will see through the meeting. And hopefully you're going to be able to see those. It's just you're not going to get uh, a chance to see the uh, participants around the table. So with that in mind, welcome to all. And we're going to start with a brief roll call. Um, I'm just going to be listening for a here because I'm going to have my head down. Okay. Uh, Jim is here. Diane Durawick. Yeah. Thank you. Jolene can you Hecht. Use, can you use the mic because people on Zoom can't ah, hear you? Excuse me. Lisa Tafoya is not here. Pam Livingston. Uh, Catherine Schmidt. Jean Dasher, Here. thank you. Uh, Don Elwanger, Here. thank you. Joan Trava, yes. thank you. Kathy Waugh, Here. thank you. And Jan Beal, thanks. So can the people hear us? Ask them. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. Well, we're going to go to a... A very brief chair report. First of all, I'm asking everybody around the table to strap on their seat belts because we got lots to do in terms of, as you can see, reports and proposals. And the idea is to try to make our way through and complete those two important tasks today. And if there's, if it, that is not possible because of interest in conversation. We definitely want to try to wrap this up by the May meeting because this is the next to the last and May will be the last meeting of this fiscal year. <laughs> and we want to get those reports and proposals acted upon in the form of a, um, a recommendation, formal recommendation to the board up, down or sideways uh, before we adjourn the fiscal year. The second thing I wanted to uh, just remark to our own committee members, um, had a chance to receive a, or be CC'd on a, uh, a zone walker report from uh, from Gene Dashell and, and Don uh, that uh, was part of a report to a committee, to our committee. And I just wanted to say that it was, uh, I talked to Gene before the meeting, we're gonna to try to standardize our communication within the committee. And the idea, of, you'll see the format that's in use this afternoon with the reports and proposals, but it's something that was very, very helpful to me in understanding the work that they were re suggesting or requesting. And the idea that we can adopt that as part of a, uh, 
perhaps a larger suggested format for zone walks uh, for next year. Uh, something that if we have time to consider this time around in this meeting, that's great. If not, by uh, by next week, next meeting, excuse my my syntax. And with that in mind, I think we're ready to call on Paul for his zone one through six tree report. Yes. Just one. Oh, I'm sorry. Cannot hear. I've got to learn to use the mic. Closer. Oh, okay. That did not need a mic. <laughs> This procedure is on. I mean, um, are we ready to go? Yeah, we're ready. Okay. Okay. So we walked zone one, Teresa and I, and Pam walked zone one uh, back in March. So again, the purpose of the zone walks is to identify trees uh, either for removal and or for pruning for canopy weight and um, structural safety. So I'm going to address the removals that we identified in zone one first, starting with figure one on the report. We're just bringing it up. Okay. Oh, we didn't build the grove three report. It was made earlier. Yeah, right there. I didn't change anything. Can we move back a little bit? Yeah, I can't. Oh, sorry, oh, I just came back and I can't see anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, we're almost ready. Okay. So if we want to um, scroll down to um, the figures, we can go through this so we can see um, on the report. So if you want to go to figure one of the pictures, that way everybody can see it. There it is, right there. Okay, so we have a tulip tree that is wedged in between a redwood and another tulip tree. And the one in the center is the tree that we are recommending for removal due to uh, indicators of decline in the tree. Um, and around the base of the tree, there's some significant damage. If we go to the next figure, and this is all around the base of the tree. There's uh, extensive damage to the base of the tree and root system. I believe this is the contributing factor to this tree's decline. Uh, at this point, because of the amount of decay and um, damage around the base, uh, we're recommending this tree for removal. So that is the first. Yes. Correct. Because there's really not an available, there's not enough available light for, for a tree to really develop in that spot. And that's another reason why this tree has fallen into decline as well, because it's just being out competed by the other trees around it. So you have two other large trees that um, essentially are are taking over that spot. So I, I wouldn't recommend a replacement in this location um, due to the other large mature trees there that are, that are healthy. 
And then the second tree that we recommended for removal is a carob tree, and it is in between 1107 and 1105. So if we scroll down, you can see, there you go, there it is right there. So um, this is a tree that, that we, we are pruning regularly due to um, the aggressive nature of the tree. This is a fast growing tree. This carob tree is in a poor location for the size of tree that it is, unfortunately. And we were able to meet the homeowner who happened to be um, outside as we were walking by and showed us that the tree roots are actually uh, causing damage to the um, garage and to the foundation of the building. So, not, and, and also in addition, the two walkways going to the patios of both residents are, are being impacted by root issues here. So you can see the uh, garage, there's a lifting in the garage. So there's, very little we can do to mitigate root lifting with the tree in the location that it is. Um, so again, because of the damage to the structure, we're recommending the tree for removal. Did you say it was a carob? Carob, yeah. And then, um, so the remainder of the report, we have trees that we've recommended for uh, Canopy thinning, weight reduction pruning. Um, I I want to be brief as possible. So um, as we go through the report, we've identified several trees that we are recommending weight reduction pruning um, to help mitigate the potential for limb failure through uh, canopy weight. So those will be uh, listed as priorities A and B in the work proposal. So the first, the first one is the tulip tree right out here by the pool. Um, this would be figure six in the report. So we would be looking to reduce weight throughout the canopy of the tree. Uh, all those long overhanging limbs above the pool, we would reduce that, the canopy weight. And then the next item would be the two liquid ambers right outside um, this building. So again, looking to reduce canopy weight, canopy height um, to alleviate some of the weight and sail on the liquid ambers. And then we have uh, three, I believe it's three tulip trees along the tennis court. Again, we're looking for a weight reduction to uh, reduce the, the, the sale on the tulips. And this is just another picture of the, the three trees we listed there. Um, we're also recommending some weight reduction on the camphor tree that's overhanging the tennis court. So you can see because of the large tulip trees, the growth of the, the uh, camphor has been pushed out to its available space, but those really long limbs, we want to reduce some of the, the weight on the branches there. So we prevent a limb failure. Uh, two cedar trees, again, just like last year, we're looking at trees that have had the most um, failure and cedar trees were one of them. So again, we're looking to reduce uh, tipping back some of those long branches, slow down the branch elongation and reduce weight on the branch ends. Zone one. And then we have two ash trees. This is an Adelphi court. <clears throat> again, it's, it's going through the entire canopy, reducing end weight on the, on the branches. So this would be this. The next figure is the. There's a smaller ash tree in front. So there's the smaller one of the two in the front. So we would prune both trees. And another cedar tree. 
Um, this one is near the on the Howe Avenue side. This this tree we're going to be pruning, um, specifically focusing on branches that are overhanging the um, home out there. When we were on the Howe Avenue, we did identify several trees that are hanging over Howe Avenue that have broken limbs in them, and I reported those to uh, the city of Sacramento for them to address uh, some of the broken limbs in there. So. Uh, we did find one redwood with a co-dominant top. This is at 27 Adelphi. So we'll be um, looking to do some reduction on one of the co-dominants on the redwood. You can see this is the other picture there. Well, so we would reduce um, one of those tops. And again, going through the report, we're still looking at, at trees for weight reduction. So we have a cedar tree that we're looking to prune for weight reduction. And a tupelo as well. Do some corrective pruning there to manage the included codominant. And another cedar tree, again, weight reduction on those branches, really focusing on stuff that's overhanging the uh, homes. And we have another liquid amber. Again, liquid ambers, we're looking to reduce the overall height and, and width of canopy to reduce the wind, wind load on those branch ends. And another cedar tree, again, a lot of redundancy here, but in weight reduction, to reduce uh, limb, limb failure potential. And that's it. Yes, zone one, yeah. Questions around for Paul. Great time to have him here. Questions that may come up. So for both the trees that we recommended removal, we will have to permit through um, Sac City. So those would require a review from the city, Arborist. Are there any further questions? The thing that's nice is that Paul has listed these by priority, so we have a sense of urgency attached. And it looks as if the total, the total cost for tree work as outlined by Paul, will be 27,465. And while it's not our um, business to necessarily deal with the dollar amounts, um, it would appear that the, the work described is, is work that's needed. And do I hear a mo yes, Jane? Yeah, and when we compared it to the work from last year, it's significantly less. Can I ask a question? Yes, liaison, please. Just, just a, a question, please, uh, on the, oops, let me get my glasses too. Um, priority C, I'm noticing, whoa, what's that? What's happening there? Where is that? Oh. Yeah, somebody must have marched. <laughs> level, uh, uh, level C pruning, and you've got a, <clears throat> a two below that takes, you've got 12 hours and six hours. <clears throat> now that's low priority, 
Is that correct? What does that mean by low priority? So the way that we broke down levels of priority is we're looking at if a tree was to fail, what safety impact would it have on the community? Um, and, and so all the trees that we list are trees that are showing signs in need of work, work done, necessary work done to the trees. Um, the priority levels are, are based on if the tree was to fail, what would be the potential impact to the community? Would it damage a home? Are there potential for um, impacts on where people are throughout the property? So that's how we break down the priority, but all the trees that we list in the tree report require, require work. So is that correct, 12 hours to do that truly? Correct. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> is this something that we could put on a list, say, to to uh, review uh, six months down the line? Or is it something that you feel should be done now since you are doing work in the area around those trees? That's just a general question that so I can let the board know. Yeah, if we look at the photo, maybe we can see mm -hmm. that it needs a lot, that it's big and needs a lot of work. Which then, um, let, let me see if you can figure find. number good. Yeah, so we can look at figures. Um, if we pull up the C one was the camphor tree that is over uh, near the tennis court, and that is figure ten. Figure 10. So this is one of the trees in the level C. Um, again, I also list them in in priority of, of likelihood of tree failure. And, and camphor trees have a very low likelihood of failure as far as the species go. But again, you can see the significant amount of weight in this tree. Um, so again, it's the trees showing signs of, you know, necessary work on there. And, and just because a tree has a low uh, likelihood of a, of a failure as a species doesn't mean that it can't fail due to, you know, growth and, and um, where the tree is located. So again, I, I, would, I would definitely recommend uh, that what we list in the report is, is necessary to all the trees. Uh, just, just it, once, just, just figure uh, eighteen. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this one is right by the tennis court, so we got people on there. So I'm just, so I'm just wondering why that would be in C when it should really be perhaps in B, since in case would that be? I mean, am I in the right track here or not? Yeah, I mean, I was that was kind of a borderline one for me to put it in in a B. I only listed it just because again, camphers have a low likelihood of okay. failure just as a okay. species. Okay. Um, I mean, it, uh, definitely, you know, we list everything out here for Nepenthe um, to review, and everything's listed out there as as a, a menu in a sense. So, um, is to the discretion of the grounds committee as to how they want to approve or not approve, but we're only listing trees that are showing signs of necessary work. Jean has a question. Yeah. So here's the two below here. And again, we're listing this tree because of the codominant and because of growth and weight, we want to, we're wanting to manage the inclusion area here. So this is a tree, there's a walkway here too. So again, tupelos as a species aren't prone to um, failure per se, but again, the longer we allow the growth to develop in the canopy, the more, we're, more pressure we're putting on this attachment. So again, coming in here to address the canopy and to help alleviate some of that um, pressure on that attachment point on this tree, you know, 
the more likely we are to prevent this tree from having a, a tree failure. So is the reason that that made uh, twice, oh, pardon me, is the reason that that tree that looks rather spindly compared to the one before near the tennis courts, it requires twice as much work? Is I, it because of its height? I honestly think that might be a typo. I, I, I think it might be a typo actually looking at the, um, I think, I think they're supposed to be reversed. I think the, I think the budget for the, um, camphor is actually the, the 12 hour budget. That was. You could camphor is 12 hours. Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah, I think we have those budgets reversed. It should be the other way around. Yeah. Just based on their priority. Do we have other questions? We can revise that. Get it sent back over. Then I would call for a, a vote. I I move that we um, approve the work to tr the tree work proposal submitted by Paul. Do I have a second? Gene is second. Let's take a poll. All those in favor of approving the report as presented by Paul, please. Are there any abstentions or are we unanimous? I guess we are. Okay, job well done. We are going to open it up briefly to Paul for questions. And at this point, I'm just going to say we'll keep the questions brief. Hopefully the answers will be. But if you have a question on your mind related to tree work, um, this, now is the time. Diane? Well, I just want to ask, I know uh, you did a zone two tree walk. It, can, you, can you forward me? You know, I, I didn't go on the walk. Jim didn't go on a walk because we, we had a walk last year. We did most of the stuff. So I was just wondering if there was anything of a major trouble in zone two. Nothing of major trouble. <laughs> but I will have a report. I should have a report out um, by middle of next week so that everybody has advanced time to review it. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? Paul, I have one that's just general in nature. Uh, given the extensive work that we did on trees over the last 18 months as a result of the, the atmospheric storms that came through and all of the work that we did with co-dominance and thinning of profiles and everything else, um, as we look forward now, uh, what's your sense of uh, the need for heavy expenditure for that type of preventive maintenance? Well, after going through uh, zones one and two, um, we we definitely made a big impact with the work that we did last year. Um, as you can see from what we presented today and what we'll present in May, um, there is definitely less that looks like needs to be addressed this year um, as far as the growth on that we're seeing. Um, I've seen a lot of good response growth from the redwood codominance that we've uh, eliminated this last year. Um, also the cedar weight reduction, uh, th those trees are also responding really well to that work. So again, I don't think that those are gonna be trees that we're gonna have to, that Nepenthe is gonna need to address um, in the next, you know, couple of years, a lot of the cedar trees are going to be trees that once we do that weight reduction, that might hold for five years, it may hold for 10 plus years. So that may be work that, you know, is, is going to be down the line significantly less, uh, this year, because we didn't spend a lot, um, of, our attention on liquid ambers, we're gonna be looking at liquid ambers again, because again, the nature of, of those trees is they're, they're much vigorous grower. So we're gonna be looking at the liquid ambers. So we're gonna see a lot more of those on the report. But overall, I do think that between the annual pruning that we're doing and then last year's really extensive work, I, I do see um, significant, I'm seeing significantly less need um, so far in the trees than, than so it's fair to say we really are over the extraordinary heavy lifting that was required I think so again the codominants are going to be something that is not going to need to be addressed again so reducing those redwood codominants is going to take a major 
a major chunk out of the the tree work needs through the through the community and as well as provide a, should provide a good level of uh, safety from what we did there so uh, storm related incidents um, we, we should see a, a big reduction in that so I, I definitely feel that the the work that was done last year is making an impact uh, as far as what we're seeing growth wise and then for year to year growth, we're going to see more. We're going to, we're always going to see annual growth on, on trees like the ash trees, elm trees, liquid ambers, tulips. Those trees grow at a little bit faster rate than what we're seeing, you know, redwoods and cedars. So, excellent. Thank you. One final round or one final request. Any questions before we let this guy out of Dodge? Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Appreciate it. And here's Oscar. <laughs> You're our boss. Okay, we are now on uh, Groves reports. I mean, uh, Carson, excuse me. I can't tell my G's from my C's. And we're going to take a look at remediation work. So basically everything after the last report, nothing has been changed because we've been doing all the, um, uh, the only thing that just was coming up was the uh, INF that we uh, basically complete. So, but other than that, we just uh, status code and we just keep the rotating on the printing. So it's just nothing coming up right now that it's a special need. Why don't we just go through the slides or photos as we see them and uh, just make sure that um, the committee, if it has no objection, that's great. It won't say anything, but if it does have a question or or an objection, then under grounds decision, we will mark that as, but uh, absent any objection or hard question. And then uh, Oscar, if you'll just offer the comments that we see in the recommendation or if in fact we are absent a recommendation, you might make some general comment. So basically like uh, the work that we did on zone one on um, 16 Nelson on uh, Howe Avenue on the berm, on that. Remember, do you remember every single thing? No, nah, when I see the picture, yeah. <laughs> I could say what was happening. Did you lie? Comments either way. Maybe we could leave okay. with zone rep, and then if Foster wants to make some editorial comments, that's fine. Okay. At um, sorry, take the mic. Uh, near sixteen Adelphi. This is this is um how at, we're looking out out to Howe Avenue and the uh, homeowner's door is spots or window spots right through that hole in the vegetation and a tree was removed. And so um, uh, they wanted to fix fix up the, the scar that was left there with, um, I can't remember if, if we said, well, let's see. Oh yeah, Some plant, sweet plant the, the, sweet bay, the sweet bay cherry laurels. Mm -hmm. Two or three Just to basically block that area and um, keep it away from some noise and also the view. Yeah, there's it's hard to see, but there's a big power tower there too. So it's rather ins no, they're bushes. They're bushes. What did you say? Maybe about four feet, Oscar. Pretty much, yeah, I believe so. Okay. Yeah, but it's a, like a big gap in between the uh, cedar trees that are there. Okay, um, should we be doing, stating a decision after each of these uh, remediations? It, after each one? You might think about if there are objections. If not, then it's a tacit approval at this point. Okay, of what's written? Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
So the next one would be Commons if there's no objection. You have another illustration. Of right. Okay. So at 1041 Commons, um, evidently a birch tree was removed and it left a, it left a scar there in the turf. And um, on the in the short term, it's just to take the dirt and smooth it out. And is this, I guess maybe we could talk about a proposal that um, back up for turf remediation. Um, so in several places in on the grounds, there is turf that has spots in it. And up until now, I believe the board has said that the homeowner requests and remediation proposals have, uh, have not included um, remediating that turf. Um, but that turf is, it, it turf is gonna be in our lives for probably about five years. Uh, possibly when um, AB 1572 kicks in. So that if, if all of these holes in the turf keep accumulating for five years, um, it, it, Nepenthe would look neglected. So, so there are a lot of them and um, um, we could, remediate with sod, but a more economical way to do it um, would be to wait until the fall, break up, seed it, and um, and not only is it more economical, but you can you have a wider choice of seed. You can say this this area needs something for shade, this area needs something for sun, and you have more choices of seed. So I think we should propose to the, I guess we're proposing to the board that they change their stance on these turf remediations and do them in a way that is not a major production. Yeah, fall seeding maybe. Mm-hmm, exactly. And we would be doing that on several of them. Diane? What's the, what's the irrigation? in that area pop-ups pop-ups would pop-ups cover that area if you're going to put seed down yeah yeah the other I'm sorry i just want to ask oscars i mean just in my experience in nepenthe what would you say the success rate of seed is as compared to small bits of sod putting in there all depends on the time of the year you're going to put it in. So basically, if you're going to do some seed, it's going to be like in September, so you can have a good success. Otherwise, if you're going to put some sod, anytime. Either way, you're going to have to water. It has to maintain moist on it. Saving money on waiting or not waiting? When I looked up um, do-it-yourselfers way, if people were doing it on their own, that the cost of seeding is 12 to 15 times less than sodding. I know it, I know we're dealing with something else, but that's all I could find. It wouldn't be the case here because we have some professionals doing our work, but still it isn't as our recommendation one on more, this one is one more, one of the things that we have to may or maybe not have to but we should maybe do before voting on this is to see how many areas are in zone one that require a little bit of uh sod or or seed, as opposed to say, let's vote on this one, because if there are five or six, you might be able to do that at a big lump sum. So I, I would I would stay away from voting on something like this until you go through your whole zone remediation on zone one. Wouldn't, would, okay. You have a similar situation in zone one. 
Yeah, this this is basically the same thing. A tree was taken out, level level out the um, area for the short term, um, add some soil so that it doesn't look much different than this, and then possibly um, uh, remediate the turf. Um, and um, the next one, the tree was so small that there's really no noticeable scar, so no remediation was required. Uh, zone three. It turns itself off after a while. Yeah, it turns itself off after a while if it's not being used. So you have to press it. To, press, to press, press the button, the button to, to on the other green. side. Other side. Green. Oh, oh, now it's green. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch the green button. Yeah. So I think we need to make a decision on all of them as to how we're going to uh, push this on to the board. I mean, well, but this one's really this one needs a tree. That one needs a tree. I I agree that the tree's fine. That, yeah. Then maybe no, no soil. That that probably no. would be with the record. But they're not going to put it right in the same spot, right? You not on the same same spot. Yeah, no. Of the and it's going to need just a little bit of sod on the side, depending on how we so place it. Will that be it. covering up some of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we should look at a few more. Maybe. I think, yeah, I think we need to decide. Okay, and the and the four plants are bushes on the side here. You can't tell in this picture, but it's a big spot. I went. I did go look at it today, so I I agree with that one. No remediation. An eight, eight, seventeen. No remediation. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's another spot. Same thing. That's like four so far. Are and plant a yep. saucer. Four so far. Are there any more? There will be a tree there. Yeah. And put a tree in that and in, in there. Oh, or this is zone four. Yeah, I was going to say another that's one. not mine. <laughs> Another one, okay. Yeah. No, um, but I think, do you want me to just mention something here? Okay. Uh, so neither uh, Pam or Catherine are here. They were on the zone walk uh, with uh, Oscar and I believe, and myself. Uh, they were supposed to be here today, but I guess when not able to, but you will see this again. There's a problem there with the with the turf. Uh, the idea here is to remove grinds, add soil, level the area. That's about all one can do. And then it depends on how the grounds committee would like to proceed. How you want us, the board, to what you would recommend to the board to do as far as um, covering up that area. Do you want to do anything? Do we leave it? Add soil. So the next one is 500. Can you can just go down further, please. Oh yeah, this one is actually included in the cost and shrub removal for the um, um, siding remediation program. So that's been taken care of. Next one, please. Next. Um, level four, again, this is another area. Uh, again, we've got rather a large area. Uh, the idea is to plant a source of magnolia but again, there would have to be something done as far as turf is concerned. This is pretty normal throughout the uh, community. So the, the idea is to plant a source, a plant source of magnolia for that area. Um, next one. Keep, this does not what was not removed, and that's it for zone zone, zone four. Are you, that was all for zone four. 
Okay, but I mean, all I'm just saying is that there was a lot of areas that needed turf, every one of them, where the tree is removed. We now have zone two. Diane, you want to? Yeah, we, look, we looked at this area and uh, we really thought that the best way to handle it is to just put some grass in there. Just because if you, if you try to get the ivy and put ivy in there, it's gonna, it's gonna look like an eyesore. It's just gonna stand out. So that um, we just suggested add, adding, you know, maybe to that little bunch. If they can do, if you've got three or four, if you've got three or four residences that just need some sod, do them all at once. That's what we recommended here. That's not a lot of sod. I agree with you. Because this was kind of a one-time thing, all the storm damage, you know, to have all these bare spots. Mm -hmm. So I agree with yeah, you. It's, a lot of the bare spots are by the, the walks or the streets or the alleys or not alleys, but the streets. But when they're right by a residence's home, you really notice it. It really adds to the, you know, when you're looking at the face value of a home and you see that big hole there. It seems like we might have two uh, divisions or areas of interest, small spots that are just pervasive that might lend themselves to a fall seeding. And then we have a couple of large areas that really are large that might better lend themselves to um, a more immediate treatment with, or in the fall with turf itself. Just, so that just, we... just take, on, take on consideration when you're going to leave those areas with no sod or anything, they're going to create some uh, weed problems. And then you're going to have to deal with the weeds and then you're going to have to kill the weeds, treat it, and then do the seeding. So, yeah, this this area right here is not a big area. I would not consider this a large area that needs to be remediated. Those will, those will come later. Here we go. Just the next one. This one we had some um, discussion about because this picture only shows the one end of this area with the rocks, but this rock area extends, I would probably say another 20 feet mm -hmm. past the area. So there's an awful lot of common rock. So there were several suggestions. Uh, one was to just take the same kind of rock and cover the whole thing with rock, which would make a big rocky area. Uh, the other suggestion was to take a big rock. It's called a moss rock and put a moss rock there with some smaller rocks and that would give it some visual. That would, I think that was really basically the two, you're not gonna plant anything there. No, no, we don't, no, you can't do a little tree because of the huge trees. Yeah, there's a, there is a, is a zone two junior, there is a, a shade issue. Okay. Well, was there one? Was there one you recommended? The moss rock or the? Um, I want to say that two of us recommended the moss rock because it would add visual difference than just having the whole flat rock. Yeah. So a, a larger, nice, descriptive rock would be better than the little, more little ones of, the, of that's already there. So that's. That's what our recommendation was, Jim and me. So we'll continue. This is an area that we, it's very easy. We just said we're gonna put a, a shrub, probably another lower petalum. Um, I asked Oscar to look at the pretty plants next door, but as I see them growing, they look kind of invasive. So I think he's probably right with a lower petalum. It's a small spot, but that's a birch tree was there, and it really does need something there. Um, what else is in that um, area? Well, this this um, this whole area wasn't done by Carson. This was done by the other guys, by by Coast. And so some of the things are taking, some of the things aren't taking. So now we're finding out 
we lost two shrubs already in there that were planted by coast. So this Oscar said a lower petalum would be fine. And there are other lower petalums there. Oh, I, oh, I thought you said he didn't want lower petalums. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said he didn't yeah. want it. Okay. Yeah. Yes, lower petalums are okay. Okay. This is a this is an area in the we call it the Swarthmore View. It's a rock bed, and it's got a lot of plants that coast planted that are not doing well. So eventually, they're all dying off little by little because they're just not the right plant. So the suggestion was because it's too small of an area for a tree that was there. It was a little tree and it wasn't growing. So we just thought we'd put some as asparagus fern because the asparagus fern is growing well underneath the redwoods and in the shade. Now, this is an area, this is right on Swarthmore. And this is where the big, wasn't it a cedar tree, Oscar? Liquid number. What, what, what was it? Liquid amber. Well, what, what, that fell? No, 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 no. The one that fell across and killed another tree there. Oh, the one that fell across. Yes, yeah. That yeah, was a big tree. It was a very big tree. Very big tree. Well, anyway, nothing is really growing there. It talked about putting the ivy in there. Um, suggestions were adding asparagus fern, which is to the right. There are a couple of asparagus ferns that are that are working so that the other one is to ivy add ivy and one i think if you add one asparagus fern and the rest of it ivy it's going to look like somebody threw a dart in that lot and it just came up with one you really need three not two you need an odd number in there and then you can maybe hope that you can get the ivy to grow around it well, it hasn't filled in yet, so we don't. You know, I don't. I don't understand about what's with ivy, but you know, there's been areas where I've been here three years and the ivy hasn't moved. You know, it's just. So the re recommendation is the three asparagus ferns and ivy. This is an area right on the corner of the big grounds area, the big green place, and there was a tree there, and there was another tree, and that fell down too, so we put in, there's a little, I believe it's a Japanese, mm -hmm. it's Japanese something, so the, the idea was to put in a red maple or a sauce of magnolia. I think it needs something taller. You don't want the same thing as that, what's over there on the other side of the walkway, so I guess a red maple would grow a little taller. Magnolia, like ruined the sidewalk there, or is the saucer magnolia small? I have no idea. The saucer magnolias are smaller. Yeah, they're I'm not a big tree. Goes, the goes around uh, fifteen feet tall. I'm not sure. So it's not too close to the house to plant. You know, actually, actually, that area there's an area that's really bare. It doesn't look like it here. It's probably about three feet. That's all vacant next to the house on the left. On the right by the window, they did replant. And that, those are doing well. For a big tree, right? Not a big tree, no, but this wouldn't be a big tree. Oh. Wait a That's second, a my, my little iPad here. Let me see which one this one is. Oh, the, oh this, is, this is an area that is on the border. It's on the border of the village. So the path goes in between the village and our end of our Nepenthe. And big tree came down on the garage across the way. The big thing is really can't do a whole lot of stuff there because nothing is growing around it anyway. You know, in other words, you say, oh, let's plant ivy or let's plant this, it's not gonna work. So remove the, re need to go down, the, go down the soil and remove the roots and then just level the area, add soil, and just net a firm and then try putting some ivy in there. That was Oscar's recommendation. Oh, this is zone six. This is that hers. That's yours, honey. <laughs> yeah. I don't know who that is. <laughs> being removed. <laughs> the one in the blue shirt. She's being removed? I'm being removed. What do you mean? You're being removed. 
Sorry. Here we go. <laughs> Don't mind me. Well, when we walked, this was a tulip tree, obviously, since it says that. Um, and what the recommendation is, it's a fairly big area in front of the house. Um, Laura Petlam, and add drip system to it. So. Oh, um, mm, all right. I can't remember why I was assigned to point <laughs> where the tree was. It's me. Can you put it closer to your to you? Can't mic? hear you. Yeah. Can you put the mic closer to your we can't hear you? Yes, I can put the mic closer. We're having a discussion who this person is. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's me. And now I'm pointing again at 504 Elmhurst. Um, where a redwood tree was removed. Um, and all it needs is ivy after the roots are ground. Yeah. Or maybe they're ground already, I don't know. Fortunately, we didn't have very many. Um, <laughs> this poor place. Um, 408 Elmhurst, 408 Elmhurst. Um, this area has been dealt with 92 times, at least. And so far, nothing has done very well. Is so that, that it's, it's inside, it's not near a big street, right? It's, it's, on, near it's right on University. Oh, oh it's on um, mm -hmm. okay. It faces University and it, it's on the pathway. And it's that whole area goes around and they've planted oh all kinds of stuff in there. And there are a couple of rocks. Have the rocks been fixed? Is that take that all dies? I'm sorry? Everything dies that's planted in there? Just about, so far. Speak. I just want to finish. You guys finish first. What? So Are you going to let me finish first? <laughs> <laughs> so basically in this area, what... The needs are on those areas to something to grow. You have to dig double the size of any type of plant you're going to put in, put new soil in, put new plants in with new soil, and basically that will help uh, the remediation on that so those plants can be successful. Yeah, because right now it's just dirt. What about a ground cover? Is that what they're there? They've tried. What do you think, Oscar? Ground cover for such a big area instead of shrubs? Okay. The only thing about that, when you look at the area, it's like another two trees on this other side. So it's it's not just that section. It's a big old section with full of roots around them. So basically, you're just going to keep fighting the roots with the ground covers also. And it's just going to be a lot of work to install new... Uh, net of him and ivy there but i can do anything okay. that requires bushes you have to really fight for them too so or 10 okay well, what's the existing irrigation in that area on that section has some of the drip i mean the net of him and some of the uh sprinklers but not drip nozzles like if you had not the drip, laura right. petalum you you would need to um, modify the irrigation. Correct. I just need to put. If we're gonna do the uh, ivy, we have to do net of them. But if we're gonna do the planter, we're gonna do drip. Okay. It's a really big area. Oh, well, do we know what we're? We don't want to leave it without some sort of decision, do we? Quick question. No, just a question Let me, to try to answer that question. Oscar, what's the name of the stuff that they put along the path? It's almost by Vanderbilt, it's zone two. It's separating the ivy, the, uh, I mean the village and the penthe. It's along that back area. It looks like soil, but it's not soil. What's it? It's Is the black humus. Yes, yes, black, black humus, yeah. That that doesn't look bad. My I don't know. Has anybody thought about? I know I, I'm not about some rocks, some sculptural, a sculptural moss rocks, some smaller rocks. Just it, that 
it is a couple mass rocks on this other side. It's like four of them that need to be reorganized. Yeah, I don't see the large rocks on there. Well, you can't because they're sitting on top of the tree roots. Mm -hmm. If the four rocks were reorganized, would there be enough to um, settle that area or would you need to add some more rock moss rocks to it? Not necessarily. You have to just kind of reorganize them. <laughs> that sounds like a good solution. No to this shrub? Uh, it sounds like it, this area is too root bound and that planting anything alive would um, require rejuvenation of the soil, which would be a big project. So basically, like I said, if we're going to do, we can do some uh, shrubs in there, but it has to be, the soil has to be double the size of any type of plant that you put in to have a good soil for the new plant. It's big as a hole and there's nothing there. Does anybody live there or seen it in person? Or who have, you, have you seen that in person there? Oh yeah, I walked yeah. out of it. So what do you think would look good? Well, we talked about it. Um, when we went by anyway, and that's part of your your area. Um, the Laura Peplum would be good. Well, but... I mean, is it going to look silly, just some plants here and there? Is that going to look silly, or will it look good? When we do the planting, they're going to be a, a set of three on each of the area. I don't gonna just do one every six or seven feet. It has to be a splash of three on each of the locations to be able to notice a difference on the area. Okay. The ladies think that would look good? Okay. For, for this for, for this one area, do we need to get a separate uh, expense because this seems like it's going to be a lot more major than the more uh, that smaller things that we're looking at today. A breakdown of what it would cost to do that. I can break down anything. I mean, hours, labor, that, that doesn't. Come on, Miss. <laughs> part part of it too is that it's a long university. It's a long university, and university in that area looks just crappy, you know. And this is dirt; it's not the and take, crummy ivy. It's not anything. It's just take a consideration that is this is just on the area where the tree were was removed. Is not taking a consideration the rest of the corner area. We also need some plants, okay? So you can do more plants in there to really bring that area back to life. But this is just the area where the tree came out. It's just a great big. So. Well, we can see it this way. Hmm? Let's see it this way. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, at least we can take care of part of it. This would be perhaps a legitimate first step and it's recommended by Oscar and the, the zone folks. Okay, I think that takes us through. I'm sorry, go ahead. Don't we have that 100, 200 corridor in Elmhurst? I didn't see it. This is the last one. Zone 5. Yeah, we just have it every zone. Oh, it was a, a zone a zone walk site? A zone walk site. Okay, that's different. That's different. Okay, this is it's zone five. This is Jean and Don. Zone five? Hmm? Okay. I think we just have. Well, 
So let's see, 1213 Vanderbilt, two birch trees. Now they were removed, so I need to. Can you guys move the microphone? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I was going to pop it out. The trees were dead and they were removed and there's just a bare area there and there needs to be another tree planted in that area. I don't have that here, but I'm sorry. I have that on here, right? The 11, 13, whose house is that? Oh, that's <laughs> yep, I think it is. It's at Ivy, not the one that's off. Yeah. Just needs a little ivy added. Yeah, this is. Oh, and, and that's um, Joyce's house. So she lost, a, no, I think a tree fell on a lot of her shrubs. So she's got a lot of bare spots in front of her house. Add three appropriate shrubs in area where plants were damaged. Um, yeah, she's got some pretty ones behind her brick. You can repeat those. Okay, okay go on. Um, plant redwood. Oh, that one lost a tree. So a uh, red bud maple in front of window. Okay. And oh, so this is really two different areas, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. Uh, this, is, this is the bottom area to the left of the right area. Right? Is the one in front of the window and the one that it's on the upper. Sure. Mm -hmm. So do we want do we want a little tree in the upper one or just ivy? A little tree there, and then what about the lower picture? What do we want there? Okay. Says up there. Oh, I see. Plant red, but I didn't see that. Plant red, but maple in front of window. Where's the red color? Yeah, yeah. The Zelkova. The Zelkova tree. What's a Zelkova tree? Is it a little tree? <laughs> okay. So a little tree in front of the top one, and then a red bud maple on the bottom one. You guys in agreement? Yep. Everybody agree? All right, at this point, uh, I think we've completed the recommendations for um, Jim. Radiation. Yes, is there a qu question from someone? Uh huh. Uh, when you were, this is Karen Lowry, at, I live at 106 Elmhurst, but we Ms. have Karen. a we have a huge area next door at 108 Elmhurst that looked very similar to the 408 picture, and I don't know when that is going to be considered. Karen, I thought I think it, it's in the works. Okay. It just wasn't on the list today for some reason. But it's not a it's not a remediation. Yeah. It's in a different category. Yeah, no, it's oh, okay. It's Thank you. Right. Thank you. I'm advised that it's in a different category, but Great. <laughs> it's in the works. Okay. Thank you. You bet, Karen. All right, at this point, we have uh, remediation as well as the trees. And I think the final category might be request for and by homeowners. Oh, Jim, I have a question. So yes. we had tacit approval of all of that, but we just didn't decide whether we want sod or seed. Is that what it is? Uh, or did we agree to do sod? We have no decision as of yet, uh, other than there's remediation, and that was the reason I was asking. Might we consider uh, sod in certain areas, the larger areas, with maybe a more immediate response, and then seed uh, in the smaller areas that might lend themselves to a fall planting? And Oscar noted, well, if you do that, you got to be aware of weeds. So, and... Well, I guess we could go to Oscar and say, what do you recommend, Oscar? The way that I see it, and it's not that many areas, I recommend sod. 
instead just waiting to have some weeds on those other areas and then fight with the weeds. Okay, so are we going to vote to move all of this forward or not yet? Well, uh, the the idea is to try to get through the Dubois uh, package, also through the tree remediation package. And then we also have as a third item, homeowner request. And I suppose that we could, rather than lump all three, we could do uh, up or down on, on the Dubois tree, on Oscar's remediation, and to do a third one on homeowner request. We've already finished the tree work. And we have finished the tree remediation, sure. as, well as, uh, as well as Paul's, Paul's work on tree work itself. So do we need to vote now for the for the remediation or do we wait till the end of the I would recommend that we break it into three discrete otherwise it gets if there's someone who has one small or has one objection on one item in one of the three then the whole snowball melts if we take it in smaller discrete amounts and they're not that discrete then we can focus on the remaining item which is homeowner request that would be my recommendation I'm certainly at the will of the of our committee. And we still ask the question about how do we handle the um, the seeding or the sodding and the recommendation from our resident expert is that you just do it. Small er small areas sod, larger areas no no it's just the opposite. Just, no, said sod. Take it again, Oscar. He said sod for everything. He said sod for everything. Yes, Don. I want to, I want to go back to... Uh, use the mic. Just yeah. It's only a couple uh, back to 13, 17, 13, 29, where that tree fell down on Vanderbilt. Can you uh, pull that up, please? Zone five. What zone would that be? What zone is that? Five. Right, right there, and I'm reading my notes. There's supposed to be a red bud. It's reversed. It's supposed to be a red bud cedar there, the top photo, and there's supposed to be a Zakova tree at the bottom one, and they're reversed. The written description says that the red bud maple is in front of the window. Well, I okay, guess they both that's have windows. Right, the red bubble maple needs to go right there. And the bottom one should be the Zakova. Is that what we have? Is that the way everybody understands it? Okay. Okay. All right. I returned to go to a Thank closing you. comment or summary. Didn't mean to cut you off, Don. The uh, summary comments regarding how to deal with, uh, with seeding or sod. Oscar, you were saying... In your sense of timing and cost, what would be the recommendation? Faster results, SAD will be the solution. Because also think about those areas that are also going to be adding a tree. So all that section is not going to be just yes, SAD. So we're going to leave a section where the tree is going to be blank and we're just going to accumulate SAD on the rest of the area. Does that make sense to all of us? It just, if, if anyone, let me just mention that sod was put down in a couple of spots on Swarthmore and it did beautifully, absolutely beautifully. In the spots where trees came down, they put the sod out there, they watered it like hell, and it, uh, and it just really blended in. It's just doing wonderfully. So then with, with that in mind, then I'd ask for a, uh, a vote on how to treat the, uh, the sod seed issue and what our recommendation as a committee would be uh, to the board and that would be reflected in the uh, grounds uh, rec decision on any of those areas that are affected. So do I have a, what I'm asking Don is that. Move, move, to, move, move to recommend, I move to recommend the areas that needed either sod or seed I recommend that we do the sod. Okay. Do I have a second? I have, I have a question. Yes. Don't we have to have prices on all this before we vote on it? We do not have authority would, to 
do that? Okay. I, I'd ask what I'd ask my question to Oscar was from a time and cost perspective, what would be the most cost effective or the most expeditious? And his recommendation was sought it. There may be a time factor in, in terms of labor to do weeding, come back and soil prep and seed and everything else. And I'm, I haven't talked to Oscar and you're talking to a history major, but it may well be that there's something in the labor. So I, if his recommendation is was cost and time effective, um, that's what I, I hear. And we have a first and a second. Thank you. And I just call for the question. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay. So we are good with, with that. Just to make sure everybody understands this. Either way you go, I have to go there and remove the sawdust dust and level the area. After that, you can easily put the sod or you can easily put the seed in. So it just what time do you prefer? Long time, small time, and then deal with the weeds that are coming coming up. So it just ups up to you guys. So um, I think the way it's set up right now is that it's two separate operations that we're leveling and taking out the grinds. And I would just make it one operation. Whenever you, whatever you decide for, Putting grass back, just do it all in one fell swoop, not two. That's the easiest way and the less cost. Yep. Sensitive to both. Cost being a driver as well. So we have now come to the question, uh, are we accepting Paul Dubois' recommendation and for scope of work? No, for tree. I apologize, I must be having a senior moment. So are we also in a, an agreement regarding uh, Oscar's uh, tree site remediation? Have we reached a consensus? Okay, so that leaves us to the third leg on today's stool, which is homeowner landscape request and notes from zones one, two, four, five, six, and seven. Um, again, we might start with zone one. Okay. Um, this first one was my this, my first experience as a zone steward. And um, so I was, I think Oscar should just give his input here because I'm still not really clear about the thought processes that went into the, um, this first one. So basically in this area, some of the plant material that was by the fence die. So at this point, we also have irrigation in there. So at the time that we're going to put the rock, we're going to have to reroute the irrigation past to that corner area where we have the uh, rocks and the magnolia tree. And on that decision is going to be affecting that ivy. So the ivy has to go and do a couple new plants in there in order for that uh, to really work out. Sorry, I have a big question. We're going to have a lot of places with new fence with only a, like a foot and a half or two feet space. So I wonder, just thinking of an Nepenthe as a whole, what won't damage fences, what fits there, um, kind of keep it uniform throughout Nepenthe? Because aren't we going to have a lot of I'm thinking of the fence line there. We're going to have a lot of spaces like that. Correct. Like I said, those areas used to be a couple of plants in there and they've been irrigated. So now we're suggesting to put some rock on those areas to have less effective on humidity on the fence area and just do some rock. But that section there, you have to move the water from one point to the other. So it has to be putting a pipe in there, not leaving the same irrigation that is going to be wasting water. So you're going to have to 
move it to the other side to water the other corner because it runs with the same system. Can I just, can may I ask a question? Of course. Yeah. Can you bring it back up, please? So the initial request was for rocks on the side fence. Is that correct? Okay, so you're saying you have to remove the irrigation and all the roots along the side fence, but by removing the irrigation, you theref therefore there would be no water coming to the ivy in the front? We're going to have to reroute it. That means we have right now some netophim that it's every 12 inches uh, has water. So now, because it's the same valve, we're going to have to put a pipe under, bring it all the way to the corner. That way we don't have water on the fence area, but we will have water for the tree that is on the other side. So this a simple request of adding rocks is not really a simple request. It has become a major project, in other words, okay. But it is what it is. I mean, it is major, major, but I think you're just trying to educate people that something that looks simple may not be may simple. May not be simple, yeah. exactly. And that's make, I mean, that's why I'm asking the question here. So what is the recommend? So what do we do? So basically in there, like I say, we reroute the, um, the pipe. We get rid of the ivy because at the time that we're going to do that, we are going to basically damage some of the nerve that is there. You add in a couple of plants in there, and then you turn that into a drip system. And the net of them will be around the tree. And net of them around the tree, obviously. Yeah. So, so there's no possibility of putting any little plants along the fence and leaving the irrigation as is? Or is that uh, not good? So you're saying no, the good? area is the area is so narrow that maybe that's going to be a general theme throughout Nepenthe. If it's, you know, 20 inches across, and especially this is just going through into parking. It's not like in the, in the front of a home or anything. So it's sort of a utility area. So rocks would be appropriate for along the fence uh, for many reasons. Um, and then this area that 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 is closer to us can have vegetation on it but it needs irrigation which is going to require some expense yeah if you go over to the next alley you will see we already create that team up there mm. and it looked attractive okay uh i well I think it what I think it's what we irrigation and roots have to be dug up. Also, the area, what is written there. It I think we will. It sounds like what is what needs to be done. Correct, and we also going to reinstall those rocks on a better place on the same corner area. Correct. Just a minor question. When you have a lamp post that's listing that way, is that part of grounds? Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, just um, a repetition of the old song about turf remediation on uh, for Colby. That's the end of zone one, zone two. I didn't receive this. I, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm seeing this now. I didn't receive this. So um, this, is, this is not the one we talked about on commons. Uh, I, I can't say anything about it because I have to look at the whole thing. Uh, can I just say it's it's pretty much, I'm just, it's in there because again, there's another request for turf remediation. So it's just sort of bringing that to the side. and. They mentioned there's a dead tree and a huge pine tree that needs trimming, but everything seems to be good on that first part. But it's again to say that there's um, turf that needs remediation. But Does the irrigation need to be looked at? No. No? No. And we have at the same address. 
a recommended uh, replacement of a plant in the. Uh, I think we looked. I think we looked at that. Yeah. We did look at that, and, and we said that there should yeah, be a something small. Yep. Yeah. And so we continue. Yes, that's a that's a homeowner. Yeah. Yes, we need a. And we continue with uh, 1350 Commons. Oh yeah, right. here we go. And yeah. I can speak to this as well as Diane. Yes, this. Um, this is in compliance with regs as it stands. It's a beautiful front. And the homeowner really is, is sincere about trying to perfect her situation. And it falls outside of what is required from the homeowners association and so we have recommended that it just stands as is and it is in compliance so there is no action recommended yes we have maybe uh, unfortunately pam is not here and she was on the walk with, together with Catherine. so maybe oscar you can talk about this Basically, in this section, uh, they were reported that some soil erosion was uh, going down to the asphalt. So in order for that to be remediated, either when it rains or also with the turf area runs, that section of the um, sidewalk runs water through that and comes down into that section of the asphalt and some soil goes up there. So the solution is just to dig down the area and put some uh, some fabric and some uh, rocks on that area so that way it kind of filters that out so when the water comes out, it comes cleaner. Yes, they're not here either. So, okay, so this is zone four. So management is requesting that the geranium bush be removed for access to the breaker panel and also requesting the soil to be graded and add Berry Creek rock. So the, home, the zone stewards at the time rec recommended not removing the bush, but to prune back the bush, and but also to remove mulch buildup against the siding. Can you bring the next picture as well? So there, you can see the bush there. So there, the zone stewards was so stewards recommended that rather than removing the geranium plant, to actually prune it back. And uh, we're not quite sure how often this door is opened. There was a lot of cobwebs inside. So that's all I can say from their uh, opinion viewpoint. Just a, an ancillary comment. The last two requests, uh, the Dumbarton request and the cabana. Both of those on the priority codes that we've adopted as a committee fall under um, urgent prevent harm as uh, and or prevent damage. And I would suggest that we, uh, if we had a way of flagging both of those uh, as something that would be up at the top of the tier in terms of recommended action. Just so you know, on that section, I already pruned that uh, gardenia and dig down a little bit so the door opens a little bit more easier to have access. So it has been done already. So excellent. other than that, I mean, you guys want to add up some rock and do anything else? I mean... We're up for zone five. Zone five. Gene and John? Is that you? No. Okay. Um, was that first tree on our side or on the home? That's on our side. So there's a, actually an a update on that because I spoke to you, Don, about this. And uh, you mentioned that the gate just needs to be realigned. So the gate has been realigned and the birch tree is not lifting the fence. So just bring that up here. Okay. Yeah, it looked very robust. Yep, so we're 503. Your homeowner requested 
grandfather was the youth brother. Years ago, no one knew which one was going to be Khan. Eleven, the grandfather was a great boy. Yeah, yeah well, but he didn't try. The room, and it's just one, one of them, and you guys took it out, and you were on that walk off, so you, you guys were going to take it uh, home and say, look, but we were going to think three or four years back. Correct. Yeah, some uh, lot of petals in there. Okay, this is the one. This is the one. <laughs> Joan, you're up. <laughs> is your mic on? Can you, can you press the button? Thank you very much. It's, I've been complaining about this for years. Uh, we've done zone walk after zone walk, and you know it's a matter of the trees and and the shade, and we can't plant anything there. So, Oscar, you have a recommendation, and your recommendation is edge of rock to prevent soil erosion. Plant a section of farm. Yeah, continue to plant the six when appropriate plants. Good. Some planting is going to take place. Say that again. And. Um, what about the area at the very end which gets the most shade on the corner? It's a very large So tree. basically in there, I recommend to do some foxtails that they can do good on uh, on shade. Same as the lot of petalums, the green ones. So they will do good on uh, the shade. And uh, some little johns. So basically the regular purple or petalums and the foxtail and the little johns are being recommended for those areas. Great. Excuse me. What are the little Johns? Thank you. What are the little Johns? I have no idea. Drought resistant plant. It's a um, yeah. drought resistant plant. It looks like mini bottle brush. Oh. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. They've, or they've already been used in the community also. Oh, oh hold on a yeah. sec. Anything that's alive and. Hold on a sec, Jay. Can you go back? Okay. So I feel in such a large area, there should be some ground cover. Otherwise, it's still going to be dust and no. no. So what are you going to put um, wood chips between? It'll look like a forest without. But I know in zone five, it, it it's just dirt sometimes. Um, so let's use your mic. Let's microphone. Hello. Joe, 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 Let's see what it looks like after it's planted, and then we can complain some more if we need to. Joan, okay. this is Karen. <laughs> can you hear me? Karen. Yeah. I, I live at 106, so, um, if you need to cut costs, you don't need to do anything on my side. There's enough little greenery, but I'll, uh, I can say that uh, Ivy does just fine there uh, in all of that area. So if anybody wants to add that, it's already got to start. And okay, it used Karen. to be We'll in take the it area. as it, as we get on site. Yeah. Uh, that's a good recommendation. We'll just you know, be one of those things that we'll be doing as the work gets done. Great, thank you. Okay. So, sorry, just to in, just to interrupt, uh, just got a um, communication from Nicole. She's starting the finance meeting right now, and she needs to use the our current Zoom, right? So, I just wanted to let you know. So, what? Two Zoom meetings at the same account can't happen at the same time. Uh, okay. okay. So, did you folks hear that uh, that are on Zoom? We have yes. to. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, sorry to lose you, but uh, due to prior commitment, um, we're going to have to cut it. All right. Thank you. Have a great day.